Come on, Jimmy. Come on with me. I'm behind in my sleep. Come on, I got a job for you. Job? Mister, it's awful tough to laugh on an empty stomach. No, I'm serious. Don't you know who I am? Certainly, you're Jimmy Dale. That's right. The ex-boy wonder. A local boy who made good and then fell on his face. Job? <laughs> There isn't a studio in town that would even let me sweep the floors. I got a proposition for you. What is it? Well, let's grab something to eat, then I'll tell you. Come on. the entire scene from the very beginning. And this time, put some feeling in it. All right, let's go. Believe me, Lady Gwendolyn, you are more dear to me than life itself. No, no. Yes, Mr. Sully. Look, please take her in your arms. Really take her in your arms. Don't act as though she was a red-hot stove and you were afraid of being burned. That's better. Here. Here now, you can do better without that. Relax. Now I'm going to take you one couple at a time. The rest of you sit down and watch. Come on, you get up here, Mr. Scully. Right on the stage. <laughs> take it from the beginning. Believe me, Lady Gwendolyn, <laughs> you are more dear to me than life itself. What's funny about it? I can't help it. When I'm tickled, I always have to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you paid your money to learn how to act, not to be tickled. Now, if you want to learn, you've got to be more serious. Try it over again. Believe me, let it go for now. Study your lines and we'll try it again later. Oh, Mr. Dale, I think that's the cutest thing. I just know I'm going to be the best yeah, one in it. Yeah, and you were very cute in it, too. You were swell. Miss Jessup and Mr. Beeper. Just like that. My, my, I wouldn't have believed it. I don't move. Why, this little darling has one of the most remarkable personalities I've ever encountered. Really? The resemblance is positively amazing. Resemblance? She looks exactly like Shirley Temple. The ring. No, no, no. Don't reprove the little thing. That's temperament. Oh, pardon me. Am I intruding? Adrian, my dear fellow, of course not. Come in. Mrs. Lipke, may I present Adrian Almont, the famous actor? Mrs. Lipke. <laughs> oh, Mr. Almond. <laughs> and think of my meeting you. I enjoyed your last picture so much. You're very <laughs> kind. I'm always glad to meet one of my admirers. <laughs> Mr. Almond is one of the most famous graduates of our school. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, if you'll just sign this, Mrs. Lipke. Just sign here. Yes, we're very, very proud of Mr. Almond. And, uh, do you pay by check? No, I brought the money with me. That's all right. The money will do. See our Mr. Dale at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Come, Lorraine. So pleased to have met you, Mr. Almond. Goodbye, Mrs. Good Lepke. Goodbye, Mrs. Almond. Fresh little brat. What a record. Better than working for a living. Will, I know you're not here for pleasure. How much? Oh, I can get by with a hundred. There's a slight error in your statement. You can get by with fifty. Now look here, Joe. When I agreed to let you use my name to help sell your school to the suckers, you agreed to pay for it. A lot of them wouldn't even sign up if I didn't let you tell them I was one of your graduates. You hurt me when you talk like that. You know I've been very generous with you. Yes, but I've been between pictures for over a month now. I've got my position to keep up. Don't forget who I am. 
Honestly, old boy, I'm doing the best I can for you. I'll show you how much you've received from me in the last month. Heart is cold. At first she thought he was so sweet. Will you shut up back there? Guy can't hear himself think. Will you leave me alone? She learned about ice men, but now her heart is cold. Oh! Fourth time today you've done that. Do you think I've got nothing else to do but pick you up? Get up, you dummy. Get up. Get up. Wait a minute. Get back to the truck and try to stand on your feet. This is the place, lady. Oh. Get the ladies' bags. I can take them. He'll bring them. Hey. Customers. I'm a nice boy. Do I get that other 50? You're not a nice boy when you keep asking me for money. Come in. My advice to you is not to accept one penny less than $2,500 a week. And in the billing, your name must be larger than that of any other member of the cast. Oh, uh, how do you do? Uh, what can I do for you? I read your advertisement in a movie magazine, and I'd like to enroll in your school. Splendid, splendid. We'll be happy to have you as a pupil, Miss... Uh... Alice Perkins from Peoria. Ah, Peoria. Charming city, I know it well. I had an aunt who used to live there. Dear old Aunt uh, Hannah. Now, are these uh, relatives? Oh, no. They were kind enough to give me a lift. Oh, I see. Uh, pray be seated. Now, Miss Perkins, provided we accept you as a pupil. Oh, I do hope you'll take me. Now, we'll see. We'll see. There are certain necessary qualifications, you know. We're very particular here. We don't accept everyone. Oh, but I'll work awfully hard. Don't you think I have a chance? Yes, I believe you have. Oh, uh, pardon me. Uh, may I present one of our most famous graduates, Mr. Adrian Almont. No doubt you've heard of him. Oh, of course. I love your pictures. Very kind. Uh, Miss Perkins, with your youth and beauty, provided you have that necessary spark, which I believe you have, there is no reason why you cannot become a very great star. What do you say, Adrian? No doubt about it. Uh, now, if you'll just uh, step over to my desk here, Miss Perkins. I lay my heart at your feet. No, feet. Feet. It's three thirty, Mr. Dale. Oh, all right. All right, folks, that's all for today. Tomorrow I'll give you a lesson in makeup. Yeah, I'll tell you tomorrow. Now don't forget to study your parts. Goodbye. Come on, kiddies. Come on. Bye. That's it. Scene ninety one hundred and twenty, thank you. And now you must come and meet some of the members of my staff. James. Dale, the famous director, you know of him, of course. Oh, yes. And also Professor Hermann Ellenbogen, our musical director, whom I imported from the University of Leipzig. Guess they ain't shown nothing to outsiders. Yeah. <laughs> James Dale. How do you do? Miss Perkins has enrolled in our academy, and her instruction is to start immediately. I want you to mold and polish the talents and charm which I know she possesses. Certainly. Would you sit down for a few moments? Step right over here, Miss Perkins. Well, how are you doing, big shot? I'm not kicking. If you lose your job here, look me up. I might be able to get you some extra work. Herman? The first time I met him, I said to myself, there's a fellow, when you first meet him, you don't like him. But after you get to know him, you hate him. Well, I'm still up there, and you're not. That's the answer. I'm glad you kept your temper, Jimmy. 
You would only lower yourself to fight with a fellow like that. If you know how to control yourself, you can control anybody. Here's what I mean. Take this Clark Gable guy. He's got what I got. Oh! Will you get out of here? What are you doing up there? Oh, just looking at the guy. Well, get down. Leave me alone, will you? I'm looking at Borla. Come on, sit down. I can leave him there. Look out, look out. Take it easy, will you? Look out. Oh, okay. shit. <laughs> Accident. We want to join up with you. We'll pay you anything you want. Call an officer. What's that you say? We want you to learn us. Won't you give us a chance, please? Well, uh, my enrollment is full, but um, I'll take you in. Oh, thanks, Mr. Delmar. And if you ever need any ice, we'll fix you up. All right, boys, you start tomorrow. You know, you've got a stable in me. And I can make faces as funny as call-ups. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, that's fine. That's fine, boys. See you tomorrow with the money. Thanks, Thank Mr. You. Delmar. Thank you. Can you imagine that big ape wanting to be Gable? My imagination isn't that good. <laughs> Believe me, Lady Gwendolyn. You're more dear to me than life itself. Oh, Abelardo, I feel I can never be your bride. Oh. Oh, for the fifth time, will you try and put some feeling in it? Don't read it as though you're reciting a high school piece. You're a woman, see, with a heart, I hope. You're in love with this fellow and you want to marry him, but you're afraid you can't. Now, does the thought penetrate? I'm afraid I can't. I've never done anything like this before. All right, all right. We'll try something different. Now, one of the most important things to an actress is a graceful carriage. She's got to know how to walk. Dancing will help you get that. Can you dance? A little. All right, go ahead and show me. Herman? Play a number. Just another one of those things, Herman. Look here, Mr. Dale. I didn't come here to be told how bad I was. I came here to learn how to be good. That's what I paid my money for. But you didn't pay me any money. So I'm going to tell you what I think, whether you like it or not. My advice to you is to go back to Peoria, get married, learn to cook, and raise a family. Wait a minute. I'm awfully sorry. I really didn't mean to say all those things to you, but I've had a hard day, and I guess I'm a little tired. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Dale. Here. Now, please don't worry. You're going to get along fine. Do you really think I have a chance? Chance? Well, I've seen thousands of girls come in here just like you, excepting you have more in one minute than they'll ever have. Forget it. Now, come on, I'll walk along with you. I must get my bag. I'll get them. Find a place to stay yet? No. You know of any place that's nice and cheap? Oh, I live is all right. Clean, comfortable rooming house. One twelve Whitley Drive. Oh, cool. Miss Perkins, can I give you a lift? Oh, a wire. Beats walking. Thanks. Put the bags in the back, Dale. Once again. 
forget and give. Now, the next number on Mrs. Carey's Sunday Night Frolic will be my imitation of... Pardon me just a minute. What do you want? Oh, listen, Clarence, why don't you call me? This beer to start and hits me. Will you wait until I announce you? Yeah, but I'm missing all the fun standing out here. You wouldn't play, Dr. Jacko. You wanted to play Mr. Hyde. Well, go on and hide. Think they'll know me? Your own mother wouldn't know you. Keep quiet, will you? The next number will be my imitation of Clark Abel giving an imitation of Rudy Valley impersonating Bing Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> when the blue of the night meets the gold of the day, <laughs> someone waits for me. And the gold of her hair crowns the blue of her eyes. If only I could see. That's enough of that. But I didn't finish yet. Oh, yes, you have. Let me get these give you my impression of Jean Harlow. Oh, hello, Percy. How'd you know me? Intuition. Oh, does it show? Give him love that will I guess I never thought of it. I'm so used to you girls wanting to be Garbos and Hepburns, I thought you were just another one. You sing pretty good. Thanks. But you gotta learn how to put a song over. That's more than half the secret of singing. That's what I came to Hollywood to learn. Well, you got a great break. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Come on out here where we can talk. Hey, well, the next hey. number, I wanna give you my imitation of my imitation. Now, Clarence, no more flip-flops. Oh, no. No more flip-flops, no. As I was Oh, do that again! <laughs> <laughs> Next 
Tell you to wait till I told you. Well, I couldn't wait all night. Come on. Get in. Get in. You and I are practically in the same spot. We're both at the bottom of the ladder trying to climb up. The only difference is I climbed up once and then fell down. How did that ever happen? You used to be a big director. That's a long story. I like long stories. Well, I just couldn't stand prosperity. I stood all the other things, being broke and hungry and out of work. But when I had success in my lap and money in my hands, I changed. I thought I was bigger than the industry that gave me my chance. I suppose that happens to a fellow in any line of business where fame and money come too quickly. But you think that you're more important than you are. You spend more money than you earn. And your high hat friends who helped you when you were down. I can't believe you'd do that. You don't know the half of it. I might have licked all that in time, but there was one guy I couldn't lick. Old John Barleycorn. He never pulls his punches. He finally knocked me out. Out of a job, out of money, out of friends, and right out of the picture business. But you can come back. Yeah. I can come back if I make a good picture, but nobody will let me make one. Do you believe in hunches? Everyone does, more or less. Well, I've got a hunch you're going to direct another picture. And it's going to be good. You're a sweet kid. But let's skip me for a while and talk about you. How's your new job going? Oh, it's all right. At least it'll do till I get a chance in pictures. I wonder if I ever will. You've got just as good a chance as anybody else. If you don't let the disappointments break your heart. And there'll be plenty of them. I won't let them break my heart. If I get the opportunity, I'll make good. I know I will. Good girl. And I'll help you all I can. Thanks. Speaking of jobs, six o'clock in the morning comes awfully early. Yeah, it does sort of sneak up on you, doesn't it? Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Hey, Toots, how's about you and I going for a little ride tonight? There's going to be a beautiful moon. Didn't you order onions in your hamburger? Sure, why? Well, the moon won't help you any. Yes, sir. Now, listen very carefully, and I'll tell you what I want. I want... Oh, no, that wouldn't be any good. Well, bring it to me anyway, and no coffee in the cream. But you haven't told me what you wanted yet. I just told you. You're not paying any attention. Now, I want a chocolate pecan sundae with some strawberries, a little pineapple, some peaches, a little cherry on the top, and no mayonnaise. Yes, sir. Whew. Have you any watermelon? Yes, sir. I want watermelon. <laughs> and a bag of popcorn. Hey, one chocolate egg malt, a bowl of chili, a piece of cherry pie with whipped cream on it. We have no medical service. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> medical service for me. 
Would you think I was awful fresh if I asked you something? Yes, but go ahead. Well, I'm a stranger here. You know, this is my first trip to Hollywood. Won't you take a drive with me and sort of show me around? Listen, mister, what would you think of a girl that went out with every man that asked her? Well, I'm not every man and you're not any girl. This is kind of special with me. Then try our special hamburgers. Oh, no fooling. What are you going to do when you get through? Well, if you must know, I'm going to school. School? What kind of school? Dramatic school. Is that so? Well, let me drive you there. All right. Good enough for me. Well, thanks for the lift. Well, when am I going to see you again? I'm at the driving stand every day. Oh, I don't mean that. Come out with me for dinner. Not tonight. Maybe some other time. Oh, shucks. Uh, I'll carry you back in for you. All right. Mmm, -mm, I smell money. Yeah, the car's just hung all over with $10 bills. Her girlfriend's doing all right, isn't she? Well, well, Miss Perkins, glad to see that you're punctual. How are you, Mr... Frank Young from Twin Bluffs, Utah. Twin Bluffs, a lovely little city. I know it well. I'm J. Walter Delmar, Director General of this Academy. Delmar? That was my mother's maiden name. You don't tell me. Well, I've got to leave you. Thanks again for the lift. But, Miss Perkins... Oh, we must talk further, Mr. Young. Come right into my office. There's a clever young lady. She'll go a long way. I think she's swell. Let me present Adrian Almont, the famous film star. I'm certainly glad to meet you, sir. I've seen lots of your pictures. You're very kind. Right over here and have a chair, Mr. Young. Yes, sir. Never too busy to talk to visitors from a neighboring state. No, sir. Did I understand you to say that your mother's name was Delmar? Yes, sir. Where was she from? Pineapple, Alabama. Wow, what a coincidence. My family came from Alabama, too. Is that so? We must be kinfolk, my boy. <laughs> what part of Alabama did your folks come from, Mr. Delmar? Why, you... Uh, it must have been the northern part of the state, because my mother's folks were there on the Delmars from the south. That's correct. Northern part of the state. Well, well, to think that we're related. <laughs> <laughs> I take it you're here on business? Well, no, it's a uh, sort of a vacation for me. You see, Uncle Jethro died out here, and I came out to get his estate settled. Ah, oh, yes. Uncle Jethro. Very sad. Very sad. It's not so sad for me. He left me $75,000. $75,000? Yes, sir. Let me congratulate you. Also, let me give you a word of advice. Be very careful how you invest that money. This town is overrun with men who would swindle you out of it. Oh, Lady Gwendolyn. You're more dear to me than life itself. Will you say it? No! Listen, Mr. Dale, I don't want to be the woman anymore. Let him do it for a while. I'm sorry there aren't some girls for you fellas to rehearse with. That's all right, Mr. Dale. He'll do it. Come here. I love you, Lady Gwendolyn. Ah, oh, next. Will you... Oh, my God, will you... Will you say it or I'll choke you? All right. Oh, Abelardo, I fear I shall never be your bride. Oh, say that so, fair flower. Oh, I won't do it, I tell you, I won't do it! Do it! No, will you? You'll do it, you'll do it. I love you, Lady Gwendolyn. Hello, I'm a late. Hello, boys. Oh, hello, hello Miss Alice. That'll be all for today, boys. But, Mr. Dale, you were going to teach us... Get out, get out, get out, get out. Well... For a girl who's fresh from Peoria, you're traveling pretty fast. What do you mean? You know what I mean. First Almont, and then that fellow you drove up with. I suppose he promised to put you in pictures, too. Please don't talk that way. I hardly know him. Well, that makes it all the worse. You're starting out wrong, see? And I wouldn't be your friend unless I told you about it. I don't know what you think I am, but I'll have you know I can take care of myself. Yeah, we'll see that you do. I never heard of such a thing just because you're jealous. Jealous? Me? Listen, sister. You don't mean a thing to me. I told you I'd help you, and that's what I'm going to do. Anything else is out. To me, you're just a girl who wants to be taught how to put a song over. And to me, you're just the man that's going to teach me. 
Oh, Mr. Dale, step into the office a moment, please. I want you to come with me to a party tonight. You'll meet some lovely people. That'll be swell. Here we are. Mr. Dale, I want you to meet my nephew, Frank Young. How are you, Mr. Dale? How do you do? Now, I've often heard you say that you have a pet story you'd like to produce. Is that right? Yeah. What is the title of your story? 365 Nights in Hollywood. And what is the very lowest figure, the minimum, mind you, for which you could make that story? Uh, could it be done for $75,000? Yes, just about. Just as I told you. And Mr. Dale should know, because he's made pictures that have cost a million dollars and that have brought millions back. That's so. Now, Jimmy, you're going to make that picture. What? Yes. My nephew, Mr. Young, also a very shrewd businessman, I might add, wants to be a picture producer. We're going to let him put up the money. You're going to direct it. I will contribute my executive experience. And Mr. Almont has agreed to play the lead, which incidentally, as you know, ensures the sale of the picture. But what did you said I was going to be? Uh, supervisor, head man in charge of everything. Well, then, if I'm going to be the head man, the, the superintendent, I want Miss Perkins to play the, uh, what do you call it? The, the girl in this picture. I'm sure Mr. Dale will accede to your wishes. Is that right, Mr. Dale? Huh? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, then, let's call her and tell her. She just left. Oh, shucks. Oh, I'll catch up with her and tell her. Oh, wait a minute, Frank. You're going to a cocktail party with me, and we should be leaving now. Oh, I forgot. Well, uh, goodbye, Mr. Dale. Goodbye. Oh, uh, uh, I'll, I'll be in tomorrow with the money. Well, there's no hurry. Tomorrow will do. Uh, take good care of him, Adrian. Okay. Good night, Uncle Walter. Good night, my boy. And just what is this all about? This is our chance to make a little legitimate money. That big mining man from Utah wants to produce a picture. He gives us 75,000. We spend 45 in making any kind of a picture, and the rest of the money goes for overhead, salaries, and so forth. The and so forth, I suppose, means you and me and Almon? Exactly. About 10,000 apiece. And what'll the district attorney say? <laughs> My dear boy, you aren't suggesting that I would do anything that was illegal. No. Nothing you could get caught at. Everything will be strictly within the law. You will be in charge of the entire production and the handling of the money. It will be deposited in the bank in your name. The worst you might be accused of would be extravagance. And you know, you always did spend a lot of money on your pictures. I get it. And uh, you'll cooperate? I'll make him a picture. Good boy. I knew you would. Come around first thing in the morning, give or some of the details. Now, good night. Good night. Well, fellas, that's how it is. We're going to try and make the picture on a short bankroll. I can't pay the kind of money you fellas get, but it would help me an awful lot if I could get a couple of songs from you. I know you're in the money, and if you don't want to do it, why, well, I'll understand. You can count on me, Jimmy. You can pay me anything you want. Me too. I got a couple of lyrics you can have. You helped us get a start, and we'll help you now. Jimmy, you can depend on me for any dance routines you want. That's the kind of a little guy I am. Ah, oh, that's great of you, fellas. Save the bouquet. Listen to this tune, see how you like it. Say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get the girl over here that's gonna sing it, will you? Sure, go ahead. Where's your phone? Right in there, Jimmy. Play that first train over again, Dick. Yes, I know all that. But when do we cut up the dough? Now, don't be impatient, Adrian. We'll have to wait till Jimmy is well underway with the picture. That'll make it look better to the sucker. I mean, to Mr. Young, the producer. Hey, there isn't any chance of a kickback on this, is there? No danger to us. We're not connected with it. Jimmy Dale is the man who's legally responsible for everything. I get it. You fixed it so that you're out from under and he has to take the rap. Your language is very crude, Adrian, but I see that you understand. Then my heart wants to go to you. Each time you call me darling, I'm up and jumping right through. I'd love to say yes to you. You know all the words now? I think so. 
think so. Well, let's try it right through. What's your high note? Uh, I don't know. I'd say C, maybe B flat, don't you think? Possibly A major. Yeah. What key do you sing in? I don't know that either. She does sing, doesn't she? Or, uh, try it in that, Dick. How I'd love to say yes to you. Oh, my I love to confess you. to you. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Let's try it again. This time, put a little life in it. Give it a little, uh, push. How I'd love to say yes. No, no, you're not putting anything into it. Oh, Jimmy, let's call it a day. We've been at this for hours. When I get it right, I'll quit. Now, look, honey, when you sing the first line, sock it a bit. Oh, how I'd love to say yes to you. Now, go ahead. Dick. How I'd love to say yes. No. No. Can't you get it through your head? Sing it as though the lyrics meant something. Oh, I guess I'm a little tired. Well, do you think it's been any pleasure for me sweating around here for hours trying to teach a number to a dummy? I don't think you should be so harsh with Miss Perkins. After all, she's an artist. Then you rehearse her. And what Mr. Dale means is when you say yes, you gotta, you gotta say yes. You know, yes. Yes. Now listen, I don't care anything about your feelings. You're just a voice. All I want from you is one thing. I want this song sung the best way it can possibly be sung. Now, if you don't want to do it and you don't want to work on it, you better go back to Peoria. I will. Come here. If you're going to work for me, you better get used to this kind of treatment. I'm only doing this because I think you have something in you and I'm trying to drag it out. Mr. Dale, don't you think it's... No! Now, come on, do the chorus again. Dick. How I'd love to say yes. No! Can't you remember anything I tell you? Yes, I remember. Then why don't you do it? All right. Now, come on, do it from the beginning.
China, Dolly, high up and jumpy like Lou. I like to say it to you. release for it? I might. I'll tell you what you need. One splash production number to finish and it's in the bag. I know what you mean. And I have it. Good. Say, Jimmy, where'd you get that girl? She's a fine. Would you like to handle it or are you too big an agent to bother with an unknown? No, I think I can do something for her. Well, we can talk about that later. I have to get back to the stage. Well, let me know when the picture's finished. And send that girl over to see me. Mr. Dale, we got a great idea for the picture. We worked it out ourselves, too. Yeah, two wrestlers meeting on the street. Yeah. Wrestlers? Yeah, meeting on the street. Watch it. Hello, boy. Hello, Stanislaus. I'm glad to see you, Sampuslapasus. <laughs> Look, Carter, look, Carter, look, Carter, look, Carter, look, Carter, 
To strangle a hoax. Glad to see you. See, see you later. later. How do you like that, Mr. Dale? All right. <laughs> I'll see if I can find a way in the picture. Oh, thanks. Boy, we're made. Yes, sir. And when this picture comes out, we're going to sell the ice business. Now, wait a minute. Why don't we keep the ice business and just be actors on the side? Don't be silly. What will our public think? Did you ever see anyone come up to a nice wagon and ask for an autograph? I'm going to do a lot for you. This quickie we're making doesn't mean a thing. I'll put you in a real picture. That's awfully nice of you, Adrian. I could be lots nicer to you if you weren't tied up with our friend, the director. Why, I'm not tied up to him. Well, I had the idea that you two were interested in each other. To him, I don't exist. I'm just a voice. Well, in that case, how about going to dinner with me this evening? No, I'd love to. All right, on your toes, everybody. Let's go. All set, George? Right. Come on, Adrian, let's rehearse the scene. Why don't you stop acting like a director? I know what to do. I don't need you to rehearse me. I'll give out the scene when you're ready to shoot it. Oh, won't you run it through once for me? Why, certainly, honey. Don't let him get you excited, Jimmy. Oh, he was all right till he got his face on a couple of thousand feet of film. Now he's going to be the same heel he's always been. Don't forget, you have to finish the picture with him. I know it. If he wasn't established to know I'd throw him out of the studio. He's got me over a barrel and he knows it. Well, Jimmy, take a look at this and see if it's what you want, will you? Okay. Well, Jimmy, how's it going? All right, except for your most famous graduate. Oh, oh, all artists are temperamental, Jimmy. You know that. Yeah, I can take it from artists. I can't take it from him. <laughs> I'd like to see you for a few minutes, Jimmy. Well, here I am. I mean, in your office. All right. I'll be back in five minutes, Eddie. Right. Oh, uh, Adrian. Take it easy, folks. Well, what's on your mind? I want to congratulate you, my boy. You've made it look very good. Mr. Young can have no possible complaint. That's right. And now, um, suppose our little company declares a dividend. I think it's time that we should split up the money according to our understanding. There isn't going to be any split. Why, well, Jimmy, I, I don't understand you. Well, I understand him all right. He's crossing us. Now get this, you two, and get it straight. Every cent that Young put up, I'm putting into this production. I'm going to make him the best picture I possibly can. Why, Jimmy, I put the money in your name. I trusted you. Yeah, you mean you made me the fall guy in case you got into any trouble. You did it to save your own skin. Well, this is a fine thing. I never thought you'd be crooked with me, Jimmy. I wouldn't talk about people being crooked if I were you. It's ingratitude, base ingratitude. I picked you out of the gutter and gave you a chance. And what do I get? Well, if you're lucky, you get a good picture. Then you can go around and take bows on it. You're a pretty wise guy, aren't you? You think you've got everything set to do yourself some good. Well, don't forget to figure me in. And I've got you right where I want you. You've been asking for this for some time. Now you're gonna get it. Jimmy, stop. Don't be crazy. Uh, I'll fix it. No, no, wait, let me handle this situation. What are you gonna do? Perhaps we can salvage something. There must still be some money in the bank. You can do it better than that. You're losing the spirit of the whole thing. Now, come on, let's do it again. All right, quiet, everyone. This is it. Mr. Dale. Don't bother me. I'm trying to get this scene. I'm afraid I'll have to interrupt for a minute. What is this? I'm from the district attorney's office. What's on your mind? We had a call at the office about this picture, and I was instructed to look into it. Relax, everybody. Frank! Do you know anything about this? Well, uh, yeah, it was Uncle Walter that called up. He thinks I ought to stop the picture and get my money back. Uncle Walter? Well, if he's your uncle, I'm your grandfather. I suppose he suggested that you turn the balance of the money over to him? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, every cent that's been spent on this picture can be accounted for. If you want to go in the office, my assistant will show you the canceled checks. That's fair enough. 
Now, do you think I'm a crook? Do you think I wasted your money? Well, come on, speak up. You've been here all the time. You've seen all the film we shot, and you went over every check that was signed. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong. It's just enough. I mean, Mr. Del Mar wanted me to... Well, let me tell you something that you don't know. Uncle Walter here is so crooked, he has to screw his socks on. Now, you're getting a good break, and you don't know it. You want to stop the picture and uh, lose the money that you put in it? No, no. Well, come on, then. Let's get to work. Eddie! Yes? Take this man into the office and show him the books. All right. Anything else you want to know? Not until after I've gone over the books. Okay. Uncle Walter. Uh, if, uh, if there's any way at all that I can help... Isn't your name Del Mar? That's right. J. Walter Delmar. Well, suppose you stop in at the office tomorrow, will you? Oh, very gladly. Shall we lunch together? No lunch. The district attorney just wants to talk to you. We've had several complaints about your school. Just a minute, uh, my dear sir. 10 o'clock tomorrow and be there. Yes, sir. And now, gentlemen, I... Uh, yes. That's how we stand right up to the present. And this is our balance at the bank. Think we can do it on that? Using the same number of people? Mm-hmm. Now, if we finish tomorrow, we'll get in just under the wire. And if we don't? If you don't, you'll have to take yourself up another, uh, uh, bankroll. Well, we'll finish tomorrow, all right. And you'll have a picture that'll sell. I know that, Jimmy. I'm sorry I listened to that, Mr. Delmar, but honestly, I thought he was my uncle. <laughs> For that amount of money, he'd have been your mother and father. Well, I've got you to thank Oh, for forget about it. I have to beat it. Hey, Jimmy, mm -hmm. how about coming over to the house and having dinner with me and the wife tonight? I can't. I have other ideas. I get the idea. She's a blonde and sings. Yeah, she's a blonde and... Hello? Are you decent? I think you're swell. In the picture, I mean. Mr. Dale, I'm about to faint. <laughs> That's the first kind word I've heard from you in a long time. Oh. I guess you think I'm pretty tough, don't you? Oh, no. I don't think you're tough. I think you're very patient, sweet, kind, and quiet. All right, go ahead. I can take it. No, sincerely. If I make good in this picture, it's because of you. That's a very sweet speech, young lady. I mean that one. Which one? The last one. <laughs> Do you think you can stand my face a little longer? I think so. All right, then stand it across the dinner table for a couple of hours and we'll have some fun. Oh, I'm sorry. I promised Adrian I'd go out with him tonight. I wish you had asked me earlier. I wish I had. Well, you go ahead and have a good time. It'll do you good. But get home early. You got a big day tomorrow. I will. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I'll tell you the other part of that was some fine. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, pardon me. Oh, <laughs> are you having a good time? Oh, it's been wonderful, but... Don't you think we ought to be going? Going? Oh, it's just 7.15, just a shank of the evening. Don't forget, we have to work tomorrow. Oh, you might have to work tomorrow, but I don't. Oh, yes, you do. Why, we're doing the big number, the finish. Yeah, finish is right. Jimmy Dale's finish. Because I won't be there. Won't be there? Oh, why, you bet. What about the picture? Who cares about the picture? This is my chance to get even. I'm only sorry I won't be there to see his face when I don't show up tomorrow. You can call this picture the actor's revenge. That's a good one. The actor's revenge. We ought to have a drink on that one. Uh, excuse me a minute. I'll be back in. Sure, but don't be too long because we got to go places and do things. Hollywood, 3141. Well, may I speak to Jimmy Dale, please? Naughty, naughty. Mustn't call other men when you're with Papa. Well, somebody call me. All right. Now listen, sweet stuff. I just had a grand idea. Let's go up to my house, McCann. I'll grab a clean shirt 
and we're off to Caliania. What do you say, huh? Oh, that's a grand idea. Uh, let's go. Oh, let a girl, let a girl, let a girl. Oh, we go. Yeah, this is your place. You want me to wait? Oh, keep the change and keep going. Thanks. Up we go. You want me to carry you? Any, any what? Telephone. <laughs> Did you get fooled? No telephones, no names on our boxes. Nobody knows where this place is. What's the matter, Jimmy? You worried about Alice? Well, she shouldn't be out this late when she has to work tomorrow. Especially, she shouldn't be out with that guy, Alma. It's after 12 o'clock now. Don't worry, Jimmy. She's a good girl. Yeah, I know. Come on, play that last chorus again. Nothing of it. Hey, come back here. I'd rather not. Oh, so you want me to chase you, eh? No, please, I... All right. <laughs> Can't locate either of them. He didn't come home all night, neither did she. Well, go out and look for them. Okay. I might have known he'd pull a stunt like this. What time is it? It's almost 10 o'clock. Well, if they don't show up by noon, I'll call it off for today and we'll shoot the number tomorrow. If they don't get the number today, he won't be able to shoot it tomorrow. We got just enough dough to pay off everyone. You got to pay them for today, whether they work or not. That's right. Well, Eddie, don't you think you... No! Adrian, you've got to get up. It's almost 10 o'clock. Come on. Please, Adrian. Right. Please, give me a hand. Come on. Right on. Didn't I tell you not to bring no more ice to this almond guy? Watch what you're doing! Boys! Well, Alice, what are you doing here? Aren't you working today? It's Almond. He tried to run out on the picture. We've got to get him to the studio. Where is he? You think you can sober him up? We'll take care of him. You get some coffee. Hold it. I'll slap him awake. Don't slap him in the face. It'll show in the picture. Ah, I'll do all this. Mm. Let's oh, get him in the shower. Oh, come on. Oh, here. Did you get up out of there? Come here. I got him. Okay, go ahead, man. Put him in there. Come on. I'll get him. Come on. Get him in there. Okay, Doc. I'll get him in there. Oh! Oh! Hold him up there. Hold him up. 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 Is he all right? He will be. Will you get out from under that water and put him under it? I'm trying to. Well, do it. I'm trying it. Oh! You can't do anything right, can you? Come here, you. Get out of 
out of there, you dummy. There's the way I want you to hold. So it'll do the most good. I get it. I got him. Close that curtain and get the floor all wet. Eddie, Yo. come here. Let's call it off. Pay your people for a half a day and they'll say that much anyway. Hey, boss. Well, Mr. Director, we're a little late, aren't we? But that's too bad because we had a very hard night. Allison, I... Eddie, fill him full of black coffee, give him a shower and a rub. Well, Mr. Daly's head fall bath and three rubs are ready. Come on, get him out of here. Come on. Oh, now, Miss Perkins, if you'll get into your costume, we'll go ahead with the number. Oh, Jimmy, you must let me... Don't make any explanations to me. Just get dressed and get back here as soon as possible. Now listen, Adrian, as long as you're here, let's forget about our personal war and finish the picture. I'm going to run through the whole number and show you what I want. I'll do your part. Now please pay attention. All right, everybody, on your feet. Come, come on, folks, come on, come on, let's go. We're going to run through the entire scene, a complete rehearsal. Now please do it just as though you were doing it for the picture. Are you ready, Miss Perkins? Uh, yes. All right, come on, let's play this. Come on, folks, let's get our places now. Come on, come on, let's get through here quick. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, Start your music. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Gateman. Tell us, are we late, man? Or do we have to wait, friend? For once, you're early. On time this morning. See, you took my warning. <laughs> now, don't get funny. Good morning to you. You're not yet in the money. Mr. Dale will interview you. Swear. <laughs> <laughs> possibilities it's plain to see but what you need to succeed you'll find in me I have all facilities you must agree I'm a genius in the game I can bring you wealth and fame honey I'm so glad you came you're an eye full of lovely looks. I'll bet, baby, you go far under my direction. You're my future star. Now, just a picture for movie books. OK, baby, as you are under my direction. You're my future star. Now, smile. See your smile. Sigh. When we part, cry. Oh, what art! Stop! You're breaking my heart. You need romance and cozy nooks. Step in, baby, here's the car. Under my direction, you're my future star.
big boy. Mm. Okay, then I'll come up. Come here. the other clothes and we'll take it. Come here, Almond. He thinks I'm gonna work, he's crazy. What's the matter? I'm not going to do it. I'm sick and tired and I can get four doctors to prove it. Well, all you have to do is this one number and then you're through. I'm through now, let's do it tomorrow. You're gonna do it right now. idea I got about the picture. And you don't need Almond. What are you talking about? Now look, you change this toy so you can show the fight, see? And then you explain that you've knocked out your leading man and have to play the final big number yourself. You get it? It's a novelty. It's different. I can sell it like that. Gee, that's a great idea. Eddie, get Miss Perkins over here right away. The rest of you people stand by to take the scene. Places, everybody! Places! Places, everybody! Freddy, bring me some makeup. Nice going, Mr. Dale. He sure had it coming to him, trying to run out on the pitcher. You know, if Alice hadn't hung on him last night, he wouldn't have shown up at all this morning. What? And did she have a tough time with him? It's a good thing I bought some ice up there. Why don't you change your clothes? I'll change it when I get good and ready. Oh, is that so? Well, I want to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to you. 
You wouldn't listen to me when I wanted to explain. I didn't have to listen to you. Why, I knew all the time that you wouldn't stay out with Al Martin unless you had a good reason. Yes, you did. Sure I did. And if I thought anything else, I wouldn't expect you to ever speak to me again. Well, I won't. Believe me, Lady Gwendolyn, you're more dear to me than life itself. Oh. oh, Abelardo, I feel I can never be your bride. We're gonna change that, Marty. Well, Tom, 